Well, the ocean is one of the, the great unknowns on our planet. You know, it's the largest um, habitat on Earth, but we don't know a lot about it. And this is uh, what we're doing is the Census of Marine Life, and it's a decadal program to discover what lived in the ocean, what lives in the ocean, what will live in the ocean. We report our findings next year, and, and uh, this weekend we're reporting the findings from five of our projects, uh, which are focused on the deep sea. And the deep sea is the area which we know least about on this planet. It's also one of the largest, or well, it is the largest, habitat on the Earth. And that's uh, part of the habitat where, as we see, there is no light, and all these little creatures have had to adapt to these harsh conditions. Yes, light only penetrates into the ocean to about 200 metres. So we're talking about uh, the, the dark waters below 200 metres down to more than 5,000 metres. So it's a, it's a dark place, it's a cold place, and it's a place of great pressure. So all the animals have had to adapt to uh, quite extreme conditions, quite extreme light conditions, pressure conditions, and also extreme in terms of sourcing food. Uh, let's go through a few of those discoveries. Let's talk first about the sea cucumber, which uh, feeds off the bottom of uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Tell us about that one. Yeah, well, this is a fascinating animal, and, and it's, it, it illustrates the, the, the discoveries we're making. This animal creeps around the bottom with its many tentacles, picking up small pieces of food, what we call snow. Uh, it's small pieces of food that have drifted down from the surface of the ocean, so, so from you know a thousand meters above. And after it's fed, it then has to move to find more food. So it tr transforms into a a, a swimming um, animal, a swimming sea, camp, sea cucumber, which is extremely unusual and, and one of the the really novel discoveries of, of 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 the census of marine life. Oh yeah, there it looks like a cucumber. Yeah. But initially, yeah. I thought it looked like a jellyfish. Actually, <laughs> it yes, is it, incredible. Yes, it transforms itself. It's it's, yeah, it's it uh, is it's so a beautiful. Animal. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about this tube worm, which uh, actually uh, sort of drills for oil. Tell us about it. Yes, well, well, it's, you know, as I said, one of the great challenges of all the animals that live in this deep, dark, cold place is that they need to, to uh, like all of us, they need to eat. Now, unlike the, the things living on the surface of the planet that are based on light, uh, uh, the animals in the deep sea are based on as, uh, either things that drift down or they've developed novel and very different ways of feeding. And in this case, what you have here is what we're calling the wild cat tube, wild cat tube worm. It's a worm that burrows in and finds oil and actually <laughs> feeds on the bacteria, breaking down that oil. So it's, it's, a, it's a novel and very different pathway to get food and, and, it'll, and, and a very interesting and very different to what we usually see on Earth. Absolutely. What about the Dumbo Octopod 1. We have two different kinds. Well, there's more than two. There's, me there's several different kinds. And this, again, is, uh, is, is like the flying elephant and in the cartoon, uh, char the cartoon <laughs> character. This, this is a winged octopus. And again, most octopus aren't winged. It's a, what we call a primitive octopus. So again, it's, um, it can be one of the species is one of the largest animals we've found in the deep ocean. So these occur down to uh, three and a half thousand meters we've found them so far and they swim around and looking for food uh, to, or other animals to feed on um, and one of them is up nearly two meters long and about six, kilo, uh, six uh, kilograms in weight so it's one of the wow. larger animals down there but a fascinating and rather beautiful and one of several beautiful species. What actually practical effects could that have for us? Well, one of the misconceptions about the deep ocean was that it was a barren, lifeless, cold, dark place. What the census of marine life is showing, and it's, it's far from that. It's a place full of life. It's a place full of life that is so different to what we've known in the past or what we know in the shallow seas uh, that just that discovery will lead to new things. So, for example, understanding how that tube worm feeds on the oil could have immense benefits to, to humankind. But more importantly, um, this is a very large area of our Earth, and if our Earth is going to sustain itself into the future, we need to know what's happening, how it works, what lives there, and, and it's fundamental to, to sustaining our globe into the future.